Welcome to my Connecting Networks Chapter 1, the Hierarchy of Network Design. This is the last installment on the CSIMP slash CCNA material. In this chapter, we're looking at the Hierarchy of Design. We're going to be talking about the Cisco Enterprise Architecture, Evolving Networks, and we're going to end with a summary. So we're going to be talking about the Hierarchy model, how it's designed, how it's used, explain uh, its structure, uh, the hierarchy, the modularity, the resilience, the flexibility. Talk about some benefits, describe the enterprise architect model, and talk about different types of business models. Borderless network architecture, collaboration network architecture, and the data center slash virtualization architecture. So let's go ahead and talk about the hierarchy of design. It's very common for small, medium, and large businesses, depending on how you want to organize them. Small businesses can be between 100 and 200 ish devices, medium 200 to 1,000, large 1,000 plus. So there has to be some type of structure to help organize these better. There's a hierarchy, there's also the modularity of that hierarchy. Part of that network has to be resilient and flexible. The typical hierarchy structure, which we've used in several courses before, is that three-tiered model, the access layer, distribution layer, and core layer. Again, that access layer provides work groups or access to uh, end users. The distribution provides the policy-based connectivity, and then the core is going to be the fastest transport between the distribution layer and other distribution points. Part of that access layer is going to be that layer two switching, Features there could be like high availability, port security, some type of QoS. We could be doing a access list and definitely FTP because these are in nodes, probably PoE type switches. At the distribution layer, we're going to be aggregating uh, of our LAN and WAN links. We're going to do policy based security, again, ACLs. We may even perform routing at this layer. If nothing else, definitely redundancy and load balancing between the distribution switches. This also provides a boundary for the route aggregation and summarization that we'll be using to be sending to the core layer. Core layer is going to, uh, again, be the highest speed switching. It's going to be uh, reliable and fault tolerant. It's going to be able to scale. It's going to be the best switches. It's going to be the better equipment. You may also avoid things like CPU intensive packet manipulation. Things like security and QoS classifications may be done at lower levels. You can uh, collapse those tiers. So instead of having a core distribution access, you can have the core distribution one and then the access by itself. Moving on to that enterprise architecture, it has to be modular. It has to be able to grow. As the complexity of our networks increase, so does the modularity of our network. The ability to unplug and plug in other nodes or other locations, other branches, other types have to be there. So that's why we have this new enterprise architecture. If we design our network in such a way, we should be able to add and remove quickly different components. We have the access distribution model. That's going to be the distribution block. That's going to be the typical in type devices. We're going to have a service module. That's going to be a generic block used to identify services, any type of services. We're going to have a data center. Could also be a server farm. We're going to have an enterprise edge module. And it also could be a WAN edge module. And that's going to be our DMZ. That's going to be our security appliances. That's going to be the edge before we go to the internet. Part of that 
enterprise architect model again it has different key areas separated enterprise uh, campus type networks the enterprise edge our service providers edge and our remote capacity in our class we're dealing with the enterprise campus the enterprise edge the service provider deals with the service providers edge and then again our remote users may have to connect through our service provider to get back to our network enterprise campus ag again access distribution and core the core will connect to like the f uh, server farm and other distribution access layers uh, we may have a edge before it goes to the enterprise edge the enterprise edge could just be our WAN our DMZ areas of that enterprise edge is going to be again our security type appliances they will be our connection point to the service providers edge and that's going to be managed by the service provider that's going to be our internet things of that nature after that we may have an enterprise data center could be part of the farm uh, server farm or it could be a dedicated data center off location we could also have things like remote locations like remote branches or remote workers so the enterprise branch could be a remote the telecom worker is going to be a remote worker next let's talk about our evolving architectures some of the IT challenges are going to be things like uh, current trends uh, why are these challenges because it's about being able to incorporate them things such as cloud computing video communication which is part of the online collaboration but also telecommunication tele uh, to call teleconferencing and all of that also it's also uh, a trend but a major challenge is the bring your own device BYOD because it opens up whole new possibilities for breaches and security concerns but at the same time it does provide a lot of flexibility for workers so the emerging enterprise architecture is a collection of collaboration data center virtualization cloud and what we know as a borderless network that borderless network is what we define typically as higher level wireless phones laptops wireless cameras it's about mobility The collaboration architecture is about application and devices, things like telepresence or WebEx. There's going to be software controlled telecommunication. There's other collaboration services. That's going to be things like uh, messaging and content managing and scheduling. Uh, lastly, there's the uh, network and computer infrastructure. That's going to be that entry-level virtualization but still that has to uh, the infrastructure has to be there so the routers the switches the security compliance or the security appliances uh, have to be there there's going to be a huge incorporation of infrastructure being the networking interconnecting devices the in nodes like computers and servers and cameras and laptops and all of those areas and storage last major area is that data center and virtualization so part of that data center and virtualization also has to do with a little bit of collaboration there's a unified manager or the unified management solution the unified manager does voice does video well manager is typically just voice but part of that collection of software is trying to do the collaboration between voice and video and data the unified management solution simplifies and automates the process of deploying a lot of the infrastructure and services that we need at a reliable and sustainable speed 
there is also a fabric. And that will be what delivers the network services, the servers, storage, and applications. Basically, the fabric is what we've been discussing so far in our classes has been a switching fabric. It's actually going to be the connection between our important devices. Lastly, is that unified computing solution, and that's Cisco's next generation data center system, which will unite the computing, network, storage, and virtualization uh, collectively or co uh, co coercive so that we can have a lower cost solution for our data center environments. Basically, it reduces our TCOs or our total cost of ownership. And that is actually this chapter in a nutshell. Make sure that you understand the hierarchy process. Understand again the general enterprise architecture. Understand why it's modular, how it's available, how it's scalable. And if you have any questions, please let me know. Thank you.